Aloha friends! Have you tried the ketogenic diet and you noticed a lot of hair shedding or hair loss? Well, let's dive into what's really going on. But before we do, my name is Maria Emmerich. I am a nutritionist who specializes in the ketogenic diet and I've been helping women and men transform their lives for the last 20 years without losing their hair. And I want to teach you my tips and tricks so you don't lose your hair next time you try the keto diet. Um, but what happens when you try, when you start the ketogenic diet is along goes a lot of water loss. And that's why people get really excited with this scale shows like five, 10 pounds. I even had a client who, um, she was 500 pounds and she would have a 20 pound loss when she would be on my diet versus when she would cheat, she would instantly put on 20 pounds. That's called pitting edema, but that's a water loss that you lose. But carbohydrates retain water. When you eliminate those car carbohydrates, along goes a lot of water loss. Now, you can't just drink more water to retain water because you're just gonna urinate all the time. You need something to retain that water. This is where sodium comes into play. And when you're doing a proper ketogenic diet, you're not eating any packaged foods. Stay away from those packaged keto foods. Those are not, those are not good. Um, but something that you can use is extra salt on your food. Um, I personally take salt capsules. My kids love this Element. My husband dr drink Element all the time. Um, if you order it now, you can get a free sample pack. They're not paying me to do this video, I promise you. But um, check out the link below. You can get a free sample pack if you order it. But it's a little powder and it's sodium and there's some magnesium glycinate or ma magnesium malate and zinc in there, a little bit of potassium. Um, it tastes really delicious, but it's like a natural Gatorade without sugar or carbohydrates. So you can add in that or add in the salt capsules like I do, whatever. Um, I add them in the morning and in the evening because it will help with sleep also. Um, but what's interesting is when you have such a low carbohydrate diet, your blood pressure drops a lot, which is great for someone with high blood pressure. Um, that's probably one of the easiest things for me to get people off medication with the proper ketogenic diet. Um, but with that drop in blood pressure, you lose a lot of blood pressure, blood flow to your head. That can immediately cause some hair shedding. So adding in that sodium or the element can help with hair shedding. That's the simplest thing to do. I do want to say that any change in diet is a drastic shift in your body and will cause shedding. So whether you go from the standard American diet to a vegan diet, which I don't recommend, or a standard American diet to Weight Watchers, which I don't recommend, a uh, standard American diet to a carnivore diet, which I do recommend, um, all, that, all of that can cause shedding because it's just an immediate shift. So that's the number two, any shift in diet. Number three, is people that do the ketogenic diet thinking that they have to eat 70% fat, uh, moderate to lower protein because protein turns into sugar, and a low carbohydrate approach. The problem with this is people are doing fat fast, they'll do bulletproof coffee, they'll do fat bombs. Um, what happens there is your hair follicles need amino acids, and amino acids come from protein. Animal protein is the most nutrient dense food you can get. It's more nutrient dense than blueberries, than kale, than anything. Check out this awesome chart that my husband made. I love it. But protein is king when it comes to hair loss. Um, protein is the building blocks. It makes your hair, it makes your skin, it makes your, helps with your thyroid. So do not skimp on protein. I actually prefer uh, people we have a free calculator, do it. And it will give you your protein sparing modified fast macros so you don't lose your hair when doing such a great uh, diet for weight loss. And that link will be in the show notes. Um, so that's another one. Um, but I will say one of my favorite stories is I would, I always lift weights and I would go to this class called Body Pump. And this was probably over 10 years ago now um, cause it was before I had children. Um, but I would lift weights and this woman came in and she would always wear a bandana. Her name was Kiki, very nice woman. She was a professor at the college. So she would only come and lift weights with us during the summer months. So it was like the fall and she said, Maria, um, the reason I wear a bandana is I have alopecia and I want to come have a meeting with you in your office and see if there's something that can help. 
So she came in to help. She was very lean and very fit, obviously doing body pump, but she just didn't have any hair. So that was about September. And we had our meeting. We had, then we would uh, talk online a lot and see how she was doing. Well, May came because I didn't see her all winter long in person. She was a professor, very busy. May came and she came back to body pump and she had her stupid bandana on. And she came up to me and she ripped her bandana off and she said, Maria, I had my first haircut in 10 years. And as a woman, you don't understand what that meant to me. And she started crying. And here's a picture of Kiki. Um, just that type of stuff warms my heart because yes, I get excited when people lose weight. Um, but when people get off medication, when people are no longer suffering from depression or anxiety or something like this, as a woman, I, I love my hair and I really, like, this is a story I'll never forget. So alopecia, there's different reasons that cause alopecia, but one of them uh, is autoimmune. And when it is autoimmune, cutting out dairy and gluten are often very, very important. Um, to reversing or going into remission with an autoimmune. As soon as she uh, added in the dairy, her hair started falling out again. Um, but when you stick to it 100%, it really, really works. Um, some other things that can cause hair loss. So we have low sodium, number one, any change in diet, number two, low protein diet, number three, um, alopecia, number four, and some mineral deficiencies is number five. Um, so low zinc, low zinc is very, very common, especially if you don't eat a lot of animal protein, uh, but low zinc, and the thing is with zinc, um, a lot of people know that oysters are filled with zinc, right? Here's another cool chart. Uh, oysters are filled with zinc, but there's something called bioavailability. You only absorb all of that zinc if the oysters are eaten alone, because as you can see, if you pair the... Um, oysters with black beans, you only get about it's 20%. And if you pair the oysters with one, one corn tortilla, you basically get zero zinc. So you could be eating foods high in zinc, but then eating a lot of grains or these anti-nutrient foods that are going to suck all the bioavailability down. So that's a big thing. So zinc, um, I do take a zinc supplement because I run in the morning before I um, have my breakfast. And when I run, I sweat. Or if you do saunas and you sweat a lot, here's what I'm getting at. When you sweat a lot, you lose a lot of zinc. So just be aware that a lot of teenage boys are usually low in zinc and that would cause some back knee or sometimes acne. Um, be careful when you start zinc because if you just go, hey, I'm gonna go to Target and buy a bottle of zinc, and you get like a 50 milligram thing of zinc, when you take it, you are gonna feel like you have the flu, like you're gonna feel very nauseous. So start slowly, maybe with a 10 or a 15 milligram for a week, and then you can jump to 30, like maybe just take two of those 15 milligrams, so you're at 30 for a week. You could slowly build up, okay? Um, another thing that can cause, so this is number six, cause hair loss, especially in women, is low progesterone and low estrogen. So how does that equate to diet? Well, when you lose weight, especially when you lose weight quickly, like you would with a keto or a protein sparing modified fast diet, your ovaries basically are like, oh, this is not a good time to have a baby, and it slows the progesterone and the estrogen output. What happens then is you can lose some hair. Um, so there's some natural supplements you can add in to help with that uh, progesterone and estrogen uh, balance. Or if you are in menopause or perimenopause, I do recommend looking into bioidenticals if you feel comfortable with that. Um, it is something that can help with hair shedding. Now, so things that you can add in. Now you talked about the six things that are commonly causing hair loss. So number one, you could add in element. Oh, I forgot one thing. Another mineral deficiency that can cause hair loss is low iron. Now, low iron can be caused by a few things. It can be caused by heavy blood loss, whether it be through your menstrual cycle or you are in an accident and you have a lot of blood loss. Um, number two, it can be from a poor absorption. So if you have food allergies, 
um, or you have a lot of gut damage, uh, that can cause you to not absorb iron. Because if you're eating you know, meat and red meat and organ meat and you're still low in iron, it's probably an absorption issue. Um, a heavy exercising, such as ultra marathons, that means you're intense exercising. That can cause uh, low iron. Um, like a thyroid, too fast of a thyroid can cause low iron. Um, let's see, uh, you know, again, food allergies is a common one. I remember telling this uh, mother to have her son get tested for low iron because he had all the signs of low iron. Well, he was a 12 year old boy and the doctor's like, he's not gonna be low in iron. And sure enough, he had very low iron, low ferritin, and that needed to be corrected and um, he felt so much better. So just being aware that there's a couple things, um, especially like gastric bypass patients I work with, they're usually low in iron because again, they are not absorbing nutrients like they should. Adding in something like hydrochloric acid with pepsin, that is something that can really help with absorption of nutrients. Ooh, especially if you've been on acid blockers for longer than two weeks, which you never should be. Um, that only happens in the United States. I work with people around the world and in other areas of the world, they're never taking acid blockers for longer than two weeks. Here in the United States, I see babies put on not just one, but two medications to help with acid reflux. When a quick, easy change in diet, it got rid of mine when I was a teenager and it can get rid of yours. Acid reflux is an easy thing to fix if you can stick to the diet. Um, so things that you can add, like I said, elements, get the link below. You can add in collagen. Collagen is a prebiotic. Uh, one of the best prebiotics, better than fiber. Um, I actually take these uh, collagen capsules by Ancestral Supplements, I'll have the link below, um, because there's no sugar in there, there's no sweeteners in there, nothing, no additives. I really like that one. Um, and they're very generous. If you use code Keto Maria, you save big time. Um, so, and then adding in zinc can help. The bioidentical hormones can help. Do not add iron unless you know that you're low, because um, you don't want to have iron toxicity, right? So get your iron tested before you start uh, taking iron. And if you do decide to take iron, I would check back three months from the date you start to make sure that your levels are going up because um, maybe it is a, a gut lining issue and you need to heal the gut, which is going to take more intense work. Um, you can add in more protein and you should add in more protein. Don't do fat fast. Some people, when I t give them their you know, meal plans, they're like, oh, it's hard to eat all this protein. I'm like, you need to lower the fat. You can't put a stick of butter on the steak because it's gonna be hard to eat all of it. You know, So lowering the fat, maybe to add in more protein, make sure that you're getting your macros in and do the free macro calculator. It's totally worth doing. Just takes a little bit of time, it's totally free. And then the last thing you can add in is microneedling. Um, there are some handy dandy tools. Make sure you get good quality micro needling tools with like stainless steel needles. Um, but you can micro needle your hairline and use a natural rosemary oil instead of like a minoxidil. Uh, rosemary oil is really great for um, hair growth. But if you micro needle that scalp and then add in that, that's really, really helpful. But there are some other things that could possibly be causing it, but those are the main ones that I see. Um, and obviously, if you know somebody who has tried the ketogenic diet and has had some hair issues, give them this video to show them that, hey, it's an easy thing to fix. Um, you know, just follow Maria's meal plans that are dairy-free, gluten-free, uh, grain-free, and delicious. Um, and adding in more protein, adding in some salt, um, and some of the other tips, you know, maybe getting your zinc and iron tested. Um, but there you go. That's, those are my tips. And I hope that you have a fantastic day, everybody. If you want to change your life, like I've changed mine with food, I would be honored to help you. Many of you don't know that I was twice my size. I had acid reflux. I had PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome. I had depression. I had IBS, which is irritable bowel syndrome and food changed my life. And not only did that happen, I get to eat good food, right? Good food. So if you wanna eat good food, have perfected meal plans made by me, and personal help with supplements or modifications, if you have Hashimoto's, if you have uh, Graves, if you have IBS, if you have PCOS, contact me. I would be honored to help you. Um, you can go to keto-adapted.com 
and find a lot of different options there for personalized help or message me uh, by commenting below on this YouTube video or you can check me out at mariamindbodyhealth.com. Mahalo.